a good start now. The first scripture I want you to put on the uh, board tonight is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. This is a tremendous verse of scripture, and uh, people are crying out for change today, and it's going to take the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that changes inwardly. I like to preach on that because I've got a lot of experience of God changing me inwardly by me saying and believing and putting faith in the Word of God and what God has said and what He, who He is. You know, we, want to, we use our faith in so many different things, and that's good. I know we need faith to believe for our finances. We need uh, faith to believe in a lot of things. But we need to exercise our faith to change us from the inside and getting rid of those tendencies that are in us that strikes out in different directions and make us look like a fool many times and gets us into trouble and gets other people in trouble. And all of God's people said, how many read me so far? See, that's it. That's it. You mark it down. That's the bottom line. Now, God is in the sanctifying business. Now, look at this now. And all of us, and we're going to identify us, all of us at the shield, all of us in the Corinthian church, as with unveiled face. So we have unveiled face. I, what you see, I'm not hiding anything. Now, there was a time when I was, <laughs> but I've learned to walk in the light. And when you walk in the light, you don't have to hide anything because you can't because my faith 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 and faith no I'll say it right face is unveiled hello hello <laughs> because we continue continue to be whole in the Word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So as we pick up the Word of God and we read the Word of God and get the Word of God inside of us and we look and we see when we come to a, a, a scripture like, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and you look in the mirror and you say, oops, I haven't been loving my neighbor as I love myself. You, how many understand that? See, it reflects. I say it reflects. See, when you look in there, then you're honest with God. Remember, God knows it already. I want to say it again. God knows everything, every detail, every hair on your head is numbered by God. You cannot hide anything from God. So stop it. Let your face shine out and let it come in. Let that word, let it look in there and let it change you from what? From glory to glory. Now look at it. Are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another degree of glory for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So your faith goes towards him and say, Lord, I have struggled all these years. I've gone around the same mountain all these years. And I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of it. How many say amen? <laughs> Come on, tell it like it is. I believe well. <clears throat> See, once that thing is removed out of you, it don't bother you. Can you think of anything that used to bother you? For I'll give you an example. Um, I used to smoke. Anybody here ever smoke? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't, I don't even think about smoking. I have no desire for smoking. I had smoked and gave it up in the 50s. It don't bother me no more. But how many of you know people today, it bothers them if they don't get a cigarette? Wow. 
and they blow it in your face. <laughs> Can you think of anything that don't bother you right now that used to bother you? Now think, think. Everybody say think. I know that's a heavy duty for some folks, but think. Well, how did you get victory over it? Hmm? Think about it. So, I've lived long enough, in case people on TV don't know how, I mean, the Internet don't know how old I am. I'm 82 years old. Folks, if I haven't learned anything yet, you guys don't stand a chance. Hello? All right, I'm not bragging, I'm not complaining. I'm just open, my face is just open, unveiled for you to see. Okay? Now, <laughs> excuse me. There are things that bother me, okay? But it's not an inward thing. Hello? See, there's a difference. It's an outer thing that can bring trouble to me, and if I suck it in, it can become part of me. Hello? See, that's the trouble, I guarantee you. Some of you can look at uh, the news. It is all out there on the TV. When you finish looking at it, now it's in you. Hello? You follow me? So <coughs> you have to learn to keep it out. Don't let other people's actions and reactions bother you. But if you don't have the victory in that area, it will bother you. How many love me tonight? I got both of my earplugs. Am, am I speaking too loud? Who wants me to speak louder? You know, I, I can speak loud enough where your hair just. <laughs> if we can learn that little, that little trick. Now listen to this. What is maturity? What is maturity? When you are forgotten or neglected or properly set at naught, in other words, nobody pays any attention to you. And you don't sting or hurt with the insult or oversight, but your heart is happy being counted worthy to suffer for Christ. That is maturity. Now, we're all human beings, okay? Everybody say, I'm a human being. We all have feelings. We all have disappointments. We all have hurts. I understand all of those things. But that's why God gave us the shield of faith, to quench all the fiery darts that come against us through a lot of different people and sometimes directly from the enemy. You can't see those fiery darts, but you know when it hits you, it makes you, oop, okay? And so if you're loaded down with fiery darts, and somebody else shoots another fiery dart, you're going to fall on the floor. <laughs> Hello, are you out there? So you got to get rid of those old fiery darts and get the shield of faith in operation, get that shield, that garrison around you that, that Rick talked about Sunday in Philippians chapter uh, 4. And trying to keep those far darts. Now, once you do that, you're free. Your spirit can discern all kind of good things. <clears throat> and if you're hit, you know it. <clears throat> I'm wounded. And it might take you a day or two to pray it all off. I've prayed for days sometimes. The, 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 the dart was so full of fire and anger and demonic power. that <clears throat> How many know what I'm talking about? Hit you right in the gut. I mean, it can be a little simple thing. Somebody say, so what? Or how about this? I don't love you. That's a heavy dart. What is maturity? When your good is evil spoken of, when your wishes are cross. <coughs> Let me say something. Everything is not going to go just like you want it. Now, let's wake up to reality and learn to be strong in the midst of everything when it don't go just like we want it to.
How many perfectionists do we have in here? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. How many perfectionists? If it ain't just right, you fall apart. There's there, one there. Where's Frank? You back? I know Frank. I've known him since the seventies. <coughs> I got some of that in me. Let it go. Okay, it, just let it go. It's okay. Oh, you dropped some icing on the floor. Oh. Well, bless your heart. Get a mop and mop it up and forget about it. Amen? Don't touch my new car. Anybody ever see anybody like that? Huh? Huh? Don't sit in that chair. Mess it up. You women love me? Just a little bit, not much. Okay, I'm pushing it, right? All right, all right, here we go. (sighs) When your wishes are crossed, your advice disregarded, your opinions ridiculed, and you refuse to get angry or let anger rise up in your heart (coughs) and don't defend yourself, but take it all in silence, that is maturity. Now let's bring it down where we live. <laughs> How many feels like, and we all do, I do, if we're misunderstood, we got to straighten it up. Uh, you, 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 don't, let me t- you just couldn't stand, just, it's okay. Are you big enough? Just let it go. Huh? Just let it go. Because you're going to mess the atmosphere up in the whole house. By Oh, I'm going to straighten this out right now. I'm going to let them know. Burp, 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 burp. Are you out there? Yeah, you're out there. Okay. You have that feeling you just got to get justified. I can't let them think that about me. Listen, revengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I said, revengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's where my faith goes, in God. God will take care of it. And I've seen it many, many times, and I don't want to go that way. But listen to this. When you lovingly and patiently bear disorder, any irregularity, any impunctuality, or any annoyance, when you can stand face-to-face with waste, folly, spiritual insensitivity, and endure it as Jesus endured, it, that is maturity. Folks, all of us want to see things changed in our church, in our lives, in the lives that we love. But I'm saying if you don't know how to give it to God, you will be one depressed person. See, I deal with people in depression, and if I can get them to see the principle how to just give it to God, cast all your cares upon the Lord. And that message that was preached Sunday by Rick, get the tape, the CDD, and listen to it over and over and over. I encourage Rick to listen to it. <laughs> and he'll, he'll listen to it. And say, Did I say that? Yeah, you said that. I mean, you know, I love people. I'm here as your shepherd, not to condemn you, but to wake us all up like the message our sister preached the other Wednesday night. Wake up. Everything ain't going to go your way. And everything is not the president's fault. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. When you no longer care to hear yourself in conversation, 
Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Or to record your own good works or itch after recommendation when you can truly love to be unknown, that is maturity. But you're not unknown to God, and He keeps all the records, and He will give you the proper rewards at the proper time. And see, I'm trying to get you to cast all your cares upon Jesus. I thought I used to have problems when I was a young man and I wasn't married. <laughs> then I got married. <laughs> then I thought I had problems being a married man. But then our first child came in to our family. And then another one came in. I said, Susan, what are you doing? <laughs> then another one came into our family. Stop it, Susan. What's going on here? Braces for the teeth. Of course, you got to have all the, the books and all the stuff that the school wants them to get. And everybody down the street's got bicycles, so your kids have got to have bicycles too. Never ends. But I've learned to cast all my cares upon. Come on, you're not with me. I've learned to cast all my cares upon. That was awful weak. I'm going to have to feed you all some Wheaties or something. All right. I've learned to cast all my cares upon. Woo! That's it. You got to do it. Amen. <coughs> all right. Let's finish that scripture again. Let's read it again. And all of us. As us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word. We continue. You know, it, it, that was one of the biggest lessons that I've had to learn, to continue to stay in the Word every day, read the Word every day. If I'm cutting grass, I'm praising God, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm quoting scriptures, I'm preaching messages. I preach some of my best messages on my lawnmower. I rebuke the powers of hell, I rebuke... Everything that needs to be rebuked in the name of Jesus, that's a whole lot. So you see me out there cutting grass? I'm either singing or worship or praising God or rebuking the devil. See, learn to make every minute count. Susan is washing dishes. She's singing, praising God, singing. I come in. We won't go that way. <laughs> what are you all laughing at? <laughs> Things liven up when I come in, you know. i just kidding. Maturity, maturity. Oh, God, I want to mature. I want to be like Jesus. And God says, if you read my word, I've told you in Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 11, I put... The fivefold ministry in the church to mature you for the work of the ministry that we would all come into perfection like Jesus is. Oh, so now you know why I'm here to perfect you. There was a couple in our church that never had no kids. And I thought, <clears throat> I said to this, I said to the man, I said, You don't have any kids. Who do you have to perfect you? And he looked at me and said, you. He's right. I'm here to perfect you. <laughs> when you see your brother prosper and have his needs met and can honestly rejoice with him in spirit and feel no envy nor question God while your own needs are far greater and in desperate circumstances, that is what? Maturity. When you can receive correction and reproof. It's quiet in here. 
That's a real test of submission. If you want to know if you've got any rebellion in you, let somebody try to correct you, and you'll fall apart. But if God has done that work, you humble yourself. There's a scripture in the Old Testament. I can't think of it right now. Somewhere I think it's in Kings or somewhere about David who was on his horse. This man come out and cursed him, cursed him bad. And he just kept riding along. And his bodyguard was over there, and he had, he had his men. And he just cursed. This guy come out and cursed David, you old bloody so-and-so. And his bodyguard says, you want me to run him through? And David said, no. That's probably from the Lord. Humble yourself. Quit giving excuses. Admit the truth. And don't get all tore up about it. But see, you have to grow into maturity before you can display that type of character. None of us like to be put down. And I remember... Let me say this. If you're not correct about the Lord, can I, can I, be what, can I speak the Bible? Yes. You are a what? You are a what? Illegitimate. 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 <laughs> you got around the word. <laughs> All right, we'll let, his, we'll let that rest right there. Cry out for discipline. Cry out for correction. For the moment it is not pleasant. But put your faith in God that that correction is going to cause you to grow up. How many people we have in jail today? Well, I'll start to say thousands. There are millions In this church, I've had to correct certain people, and of course, they're not here no more. And I did it in love. But they just couldn't take it. They just couldn't take it. And the thing about it is, if you try to correct somebody and they're right and you're wrong, God's going to take care of your little red wagon. Hello? Because what judgment you judge, you will be judged by God. Watch. Just walk in the light. Let me, let me say something here, and, you read, and you'll read this about the Apostle Paul. He says in Corinthians that not one person that falls that he don't feel the pain of that person that has fallen from the grace of God. See, that's a real shepherd. You, you don't want to strike back. You don't want to be angry. You, you, you have compassion because you feel for that individual that made a fool of themselves. How many understand that? But you've got to grow to that point. I mean, I used to didn't do that. I used to send them to the moon. How many ever sent anybody to the moon besides me? Let's see your hands. 100% I knew it. Got the right crowd here today, and ain't that. When you can receive correction and reproof from one of less statue than yourself, and can humbly submit inwardly as well as outwardly, finding no rebellion or resentment rising up within your heart, that is maturity. Are you mature? In these last days, the Spirit would bring us to the cross. That is, <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. In America, it's 
pretty easy to be a Christian, but so many times the prosperity, people get so caught up with that that they go with that. You follow me? God is a prosperity God. He wants to bless us. But can you be humble and have blessings and still serve the Lord? Hello? How many people have I seen? God start blessing them and they get haughty and they feel like they don't have any need for God anymore. And boy, they're off. They're gone. Did you know that there are so many people falling away from the Christian faith today? That was on the internet just this week. So you need to know the day that, because that's one of the signs that has to happen before the rapture. Yeah. Thessalonians tells us that. Second Thessalonians chapter five, I believe it is, somewhere right in there. So we see that we see that. So whole study. I don't know about you, but God's goodness has brought me to repentance. <clears throat> Sometimes all I can say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my toothbrush. I thank you for my hair. I thank you. I can see. I can taste, look at all the tastes, strawberries and chocolate pudding and banana pudding. <laughs> have you ever just thanked God for all the taste buds? That, how many of you have you got? I'm eating, I'm eating straw. I'm trying to lose weight. It tastes like straw. I say, thank you for the straw, Lord. <laughs> Can you, can you make a face and still be thankful? <laughs> I thank God for my bed, my air conditioning, the heater, my wife, my children, you guys, the comfortable chairs. People over there in, 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 a, in the Middle East, uh, there's 300 Christian men uh, walking down the beach with an ISIS soldier behind them. And, and they fell on their knees and they split and cut their head off and the ocean was full of blood. We see that in the book of Revelation. And we got problems. God for, forgive. I want to say something here. Make sure you take that home and read it. <clears throat> for me not to accept God's goodness God's cleansing power of the blood, that's abomination to God. That's the way I see it. Come on, church, don't shout me down. I want to say it again. If I do not accept his forgiveness that he paid the price for, that he gave his life for, if I don't accept it 24-7 and still, well, I don't think I'm forgiven, that's abomination to God. Come on, church. I'm, pre I'm preaching here now. <coughs> That's the way I see it. For everything for my Lord that he suffered on that cross, and I don't accept it and thank him for it, shame on Bob Tilton. Shame on me. Shame on you if you don't. That's part of waking out of that sleep. High time that we begin to realize what the Lord has done. The reason that we're in Christ today because of him. The reason that we have faith. Romans chapter 8, verse 4. Three. <laughs> I'm going to say that. That's right. He gives every man a measure of faith. So starting believing and receiving his goodness, his mercy. What he says about you, don't argue with God. Receive it. Come to the grace of God, the throne of God, not to pray. It's okay, but receive. Receive the grace, the mercy, the cleansing, the power. Receive the facts of God's word that you are a child of God by the power of the Holy Ghost and through the shed blood of Christ. It's so many of us that I've done. I'm just as guilty as the, the whole nine yards. 
But that light shone in on me, and I had to cry and weep, and I repented. Walking around with my head between my legs. We are children of God. We are the body of Christ. We are His representatives on this earth. He's filled us with His Spirit. Christ lives in our heart. That's our only hope of glory. That's the mystery that Paul talks about in the book of Colossians. One of the mysteries, there's 11 mysteries in the New Testament, and one of them is Christ lives in our heart. Hallelujah. And you walk every day conscious of that. He says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Our own thinking, thinking negative and wrong is what's destroying the body of Christ. Bring sickness upon our own selves by what we think. And I'm as guilty as the rest, but I'm learning. To cast all my cares upon you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. Cast all my cares upon Jesus. Let's put this scripture up there, Romans 12, 3. I want you to walk out here tonight knowing that you are a redeemed woman and a man of God. And you don't have to hang your head down, you hang it up. We're not talking about being prideful, but we're not talking about being down either. I see every pe there's people that I meet, most of them are down. Some of them, they think they're it on the stick. How many ever knows what an it on the stick is? <laughs> All right, look. For by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn. Is that Romans 12, 3? Okay, yeah. Uh, unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn, estimate, and think of himself. No man is to think of himself more highly than he ought. So there's, there's a highly, we, we think, you know, I'm, I'm it on the stick. Looks down on everybody. That's what Paul's talking about. That's dangerous. Pride comes in. That's what the problem with the devil. Pride comes in. What happens when pride comes in? <laughs> you fall. Boy, I pray for people when I see that element of pride coming in. Let's read on. Not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought. Now, on the other hand, we're not to think more lowly than we ought. We are to think soberly, <coughs> and we are to think like God tells us to think. And I think... Um, Rick pretty well cleared that in his message in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. Think on these things, and the Spirit of God will bring you up, listen to this, will bring you up to the right balance and the right level. See, if we try to bring ourselves up, that's thinking more highly than we ought. We're thinking it. But when we think God's thoughts, He brings us up to where we need to be, where we can be strong. We don't have to feel like we are under the devil's feet. We don't have to think like we are some movie star. Think soberly. We think like Christ thinks. We think like the Word of God tells us to think about ourselves. So check yourself. If you're thinking more lowly of yourself, you'll walk around depressed, unloved, depression will come in, and you bring it upon yourself. Think on that which is good, honest, and noble, and upright, and you come up to the right level. God will bring you up, and you're just happy then that right there. That's where God brings you, right there, that loveliness. I mean, you know, I might be a little bit better looking than Mike, but, you know, 
Oh, oh, I mean, he might think he's better looking than me. I don't know. No, we don't even think those thoughts. We think good thoughts about one another. Not to have an ex yeah, that's right, X-rated opinion of his own importance. Big cheese. We have any big cheeses in here tonight? <laughs> we know how to cut you down. <laughs> that is, God knows how. <laughs> Look what it says. But to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of what? Faith. A portion by God to him. God has given us all a portion of faith. Every one of us have it. But you say, I need more. Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So we can get more faith. Now, start putting faith in what God is doing in you. I'm going to say that again. Start believing what God is doing in you. Put your faith in him that he is able, well able to do what he says he will do for you. To change you from the inside instead of, Lord, change that circumstance. Change that situation. Oh, Lord, help my husband to love me. Oh, help my wife to love me. You're wasting your time. Lord, conform Christ in me. Do your work in me. Now, you've got to grasp this. This is where the victory comes. When you let him work in you, you take that measure of faith that he's given to you and me and let him do that work. You don't question it. You hold fast to your confession. You believe that he's working in you. <coughs> First Thessalonians 5 says that. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. All right, here we go. It's on the board. Now, Paul is speaking, and I want to teach you, how do you draw from the Word of God? How do you make the Word of God become operative in your life? How do you activate the Word of God in you for the Word of God to do that work in you, for God the Holy Spirit to do that work in you? Are you listening? How many has ever baked a cake? I know... Uh, Justine's makes them. I don't know much about it, but you put yeast in it. What do you put in it to make it rise? Huh? Powder. Gunpowder. <laughs> Did she say powder? All right, they used to put stuff in to make it rise, right? Biscuits? Yeah, you make it rise, right? Yeah. How does that work? You don't worry about it. You just put it in there, right? And it works, right? Yeah, it works. See, God works. God works. You don't have to worry about making it happen. He works it. He works it in you. He, all of a sudden, you got the victory. And you know, I, I, gosh, a year ago, I smacked that guy in the face. Now, it don't even bother me. Because God has done the work in you. You can't change yourself. Oh, you can go to some religious outward exercise and all this bull and stuff like that and, and count to 140 and jump three ditches and shoot five cows and, and you'll be like a movie star. Hey, let God change you. God's in the changing business. He's in the sanctifying business. Put your faith in God. And may the God of peace, if you lose your peace, guess who you just lost? Well, it's almost like that. Now, he's still there, but you've lost his peace. <laughs> look, he's the God of peace himself. Himself. No, look, himself. I'll take care of this myself. I'll say, I'll change this young man right now. <laughs> bim, bim. <laughs> yeah, I changed him, all right. On the outside, now he's bleeding, you know what I mean? I can't change him on the inside. But the God that can sanctify now notice this. Let's, let's move on. I've got to quit. <coughs> Verse 
just getting started. Got to quit. Okay, here we go. Running no, I love that. Through. See, my the, faith the God is of him. peace Himself that, sanctify you through and through. And I've been around that mountain for years trying to change myself. Susan, you know, I'm not going that way. I was thinking about the frying pan. It has a, it has a ring, something similar to this. Okay, darling, I get it. Well, just in case it didn't, it didn't take that time. I'm a changed man, honey. Just don't hit me with that frying pan anymore. One for the road. <laughs> yeah, you get out the door and, and all that ugliness comes back. Huh? Come on, love me somebody. It takes God to change you. God that created the universe. God that caused the mountains to come forth out of the earth. God that caused the rabbits to hop. God that formed you. God that formed me. It's God. Put your source and your faith in God. 24-7. You can still do your dishes. I'm cutting grass. I'm praying. I'm speaking in tongues out there, cutting grass. Hallelujah. I'm binding everybody I can. I mean, I'm binding every spirit I can. <laughs> Some people do that, you know. <laughs> Worshiping and praising God and cutting grass at the same time. Y'all need to learn to do that. Yeah. Washing dishes. I don't wash dishes. I used to want to wash dishes, but... Susan wouldn't let me because I had grease all in my hands. And, but that's, I said, that's where I get them clean, huh? She, won't, she wouldn't let me wash the dishes. Yeah. All right, settle down, Bob. Listen, ooh, that's good. Separate you from profane things. Who's going to do it? God, as you let him work in you. Now, you keep that faith and that confession. All of a sudden, a week goes by, another week goes by, but you hold that confession. You think on that. And you praise God for that. He's doing the work. You're giving him praise for it. I guarantee you, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, it depends on how many years you've packed that stuff in there. But after a while, you're just like, gosh. I've been free for a whole week. That's what's wrong with me now. I'm free. Students that think I'm too free. I say, free me a little more. I'll walk on the ceiling. Swing on the fan. <laughs> you get so liberated inside, it's like, oh, God. And all the years I moaned and groaned and had self-pity parties and spit, spit balls at people. Throw rocks at the neighbors. Look at that. Woo! Hallelujah. Make you pure and wholly consecrated to God. Well, the Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. You can't do it. He knows it. And you've got to be honest, Lord. I, I, honest, I, I, I love this better. I love that better. But I repent, Lord. Help me. Change me on the inside. Sanctify me. Make me pure. Consecrate me, Lord, where I can honestly say, I love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my might, with all my being. I love the Lord, my God, and I love my neighbor as I love myself. And I give you praise and glory that you worked that into me, Lord. And I can say it and give him the glory. And I have nothing to boast about but everything to praise him for. I hope I haven't gone over your head. All right, look what it says. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved, sound, and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. The Lord wants to take all the ugliness out of us, and that when he comes, a pure bride. Dum, 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 dum. 
Dun. Here comes the Sheila face coming down the aisle now. Dun, da, da. How's that go? Dun. I, I missed it. And that's another course, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when Susan, when I, when I married her, I, I couldn't see a blemish in her. Everything was white. Man, I, look, I couldn't hardly keep my eyes off of her. Man, she's coming down the aisle. Beautiful gown. White, pure, virgin, beautiful. Wow. That's how God sees us. Without blame. But you see, you're just wasting your time trying to do it yourself. And some of you know what I'm talking about because you tried just like I did. But I'm heading you off at the pass. You start putting your faith in what God wants to do. His will is to do that. And all these other things, as you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all those things that we work so hard for are supplied. I got about four minutes. When I first started out as a Christian, I started out doing it all by my little old self. Don't need the preacher. Don't need my wife. I'll take care of it myself. Well, I went on for a great while like that. Then all of a sudden, a spirit of darkness came against me. And I didn't have a, any strength at all to fight all principalities and powers. I became depressed, but I kept on, kept on, on, because after all, I'm a man, and I'm strong. But the Lord will let you come to the absolute zero in your life. And you will look then at that point to the hills from which thy salvation comes. That's just the way it has to work with the human being because we are so, I mean, after all, we went to college. Some of us went to kindergarten. Some of us even went to high school. And we know two and two is five. Or is it four? I forgot. <laughs> you might not understand what I'm talking about, but you will because God loves you enough that if you don't come to the end of yourself and totally, absolute, become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, commit yourselves. And I know some people say, well, you're trying to bring me into... No, commit yourself. And you know the problems you've got. I'd be in the Sunday school class. I'd be at the prayer meeting. I'd be at every service. Because you've got 168 hours a week. And how much time do you spend at church if you came to all those services? That's God's time. And we let God work during that time. Remember that. Not our time. We don't even belong to ourselves anymore. And thank God I don't. I don't want to belong to myself. Now, if you want to be, be, your, be my guest. But look what it says now. Look. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. Healing is to only get you on the road where you can become whole. Are you listening? Healing is not the object or the objective no we want to get healed where we can do the will of father and where god can continue to that work in us and make us whole and blameless by his work by his power by the faith that he has given and to us or what he's going to do in us and what does he want to do there it is on the board right there that's what he wants to do and all this other stuff i'm gonna go back i got Two minutes. Two minutes. 
there was a point when I give it all to God. I, I, I had, I had land. I had one. I had a duplex. I had another house. I had another house that we lived in. <coughs> I did all that myself. <coughs> I gave it all up. Gave it all to God. And God began to work. And what we have today is because of God. I have not labored for it. I just serve God. And God has provided everything that we need. I didn't have some local church to support me. By faith, I walked out and obeyed God. I bought this land here. Thank God for people that came and helped. Frank was one of those men way back there when we bought this land and cleared it. We did all of this trusting God. What are you trying to do, Bob? I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to live for the Lord. I'm just, I just love God. I love God's people. I just want to teach the Word of God to people. I, I don't care if I will have a mega church or a mega church or whatever church they call them. I don't care about that. It's God's church. Amen. And we touch, I've touched thousands of people with my lives over the years. God through me has done that. So you, so you keep yourself free. And you keep yourself where well, you can enjoy the Father. I enjoy the Father. I enjoy the precious Holy Spirit every day of my life. I go to bed at night just talking to him, and he's talking to me. Sometimes in the middle of the night, he'll just, I have to get up, get into the Word of God, and write all the scriptures down he gives me. It makes it alive to me. When I, when I first started, I mean, I had to, you know, I, I had to say, listen, in the beginning was the Word. The Word, what, the word, what, word, what, what, word, what, word, who? <laughs> you remember that? Now it just comes by revelation. I stay in the word. And I'm changed from glory to glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are maturing the body of Christ. You are. And we are cooperating with you. And letting you do that work in us. And you may use circumstances. You may use other people. You may use whatever you want to use. But help us to see how we act and react. In that situation is what God is exposing in our lives that he might remove that thing and we'll be free to serve God and to be that a living epistle read by all men that we have been with Jesus. In his holy name I pray, amen.